So this tutorial is an introduction to Git and GitHub. Um, you might have heard of these terms. Um, if not, that's OK, too. So what is Git? Git is a tool. It's actually an open source tool for versioning of files. So it's very commonly used in programming um, so that you can use version control on any of your files and specifically on your code. So what is version control? If you're not familiar, um, version control is trying to help solve the problem of uh, something you might be familiar with, something I certainly was familiar with. If you have, you're writing a paper, for instance, and you have your, you know, okay, I'm all done, final paper dot doc. You know, you have your um, Word file, but then you're like, oh, whoops, found another typo. Uh, I don't want to rewrite that one. I'll just say final paper two, and I'll remember that that's the final one. But then your advisor suggests you add a new paragraph, but then you're not completely convinced. You don't want to overwrite what you already did. So you're saying, okay, now I'm going to just put final and cast. So you're like, this is the final paper. So version control is, is basically a way to help manage this situation. Instead of having to rename things and you rename this is like the actual final paper, um, what version control does is it saves the changes that you make. And you can usually create these checkpoints. So um, in code, you can do this with files, like I mentioned here, like Word files. But you can also do it with, with code. Um, you might uh, have a working, you have your notebook, and it runs, and everything works great. You might create a checkpoint there. Say, OK, this is where everything worked. Now I'm just going to try and add a new, uh, you know, something new, a new function. But then you, by adding a new function, you end up breaking what, worked, what was working before. Then you can actually go back to that checkpoint. Um, that you created. So it's it's helpful for keeping track of versions, but also so that you can try new things without um, worrying about breaking anything. And if you break it, you can just revert back to your previous version. So Git is exactly that. It allows us to do that. It is something that you will install locally on your computer. Um, and uh, it it's pretty powerful, which does mean that it can be a little bit of a steep learning curve. So I'll say that up front. But it is a really useful tool. So I'm just going to have like a brief intro introduction to it. Um, so I'm going to go back to the launcher and open up a terminal. So you can use Git in a few different ways. Um, at the core, we tend to use Git from terminal. So uh, if you're not familiar with a terminal, this is something that you can find on Macs. Uh, or on Linux and on Windows, it just it's called something else and it looks a little different. But here I just wrote this command ls, which means list, and it listed everything that I have in this folder. If I do pwd, it tells me which folder I'm in. So anyway, I can use terminal to actually go through folders. Um, so I'm actually going to go into this coessing 2022 hub. Uh, and here I am with all of our uh, files. Um, and I can, uh, basically I can start here by showing you, although this is going to look, maybe I shouldn't start with that. I'm actually going to go back, going to go back into my home folder and I am going to create a new directory. So I'm going to make dir is starting a new folder. That's a question in the chat. Uh, there's a question, okay, stepping back a bit. What's the significant difference between R and Python? Um, you know, I actually don't know that answer offhand. I know that R is widely used in the statistics community. Um, I think a lot of biologists use R as well. Um, I, R is a great language. It's very useful for, for many things, as is Python. I see them as equivalent. Um, it will really depend on what community you are in. So that that's kind of my my tip. In the climate modeling space and ocean modeling space, almost everyone uses Python, in which case I recommend using Python because then you can ask questions to everyone. Um, if you're in a community that uses R, that's great. And R is similarly easy to use as Python is. Um, and if you if you have started to learn Python, that will help you learn R much faster. So they work you know, they can work together. They're different languages, so they're different syntax, but the uh, the theory behind them are very similar. I hope that was helpful. Okay, so jumping back in, 
I'm going to create a new folder. So I can actually do this in terminal, but maybe it's easier if I do this here. Uh, I'm going to click here, create new folder, and I'm going to say git example coessing 22. Um, and there's nothing in it. If I click in and there's nothing here. So I'm going to now go into that folder in my terminal. Maybe I can make this a bit bigger for you. So I'm going to CD, which means change directory to my git. Uh, nope. Let's see, hold on, let me list what did I just call it. Um, and I called it, where did I create that folder? Oh, I created it in the wrong place. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back here to my home folder and create that folder. Git example, OSM22. Nothing like seeing me doing all this on the fly. Good learning process. Okay, so now I should be able to CD git example coessing 2022. So now I'm within this folder. If I ls, I can see nothing printed out because there's nothing in it. Uh, now I can type um, git status. This is something I type all the time. And uh, it says uh, fatal, not a git repository. So this is telling me that um, this new folder that I just created is not a uh, repository. Repository is kind of the same word for a folder. Repository is basically a folder that has Git enabled on it. So um, I can initiate uh, a Git. I can initiate Git. So I have Git. Git is already pre-installed in the Jupyter Hub, but I have to initiate whenever I want to use it. So I'm in currently in this folder and I can say git init and hit enter. And here it prints a few things out for us. But at the bottom it says initialized empty git repository. So now if I type git status, instead of seeing this fatal error that I saw before, I get a little bit of information. I say we're on the branch master. So branching is part of Git. There, is a, there are a lot of aspects of Git. So there will be a lot of new vocabulary here. So just hope, you know, take it in for now. It takes a little time to get used to. And it has no commits yet. Again, a new word, commit. Um, and it says nothing to commit. Um, so let's just do an example. Um, gonna go back here. I'm going to create a notebook. I'm going to say, this is an example notebook to demonstrate Git. Great. So now I have something in my notebook. Let's call it something, rename it, um, Git example, if I can type. OK, so now if I go back here and I type Git status again, I type Git status all the time so it kind of tells you where you are in your Git journey. Now there's some red here. So it says, uh, untracked files, and it has my new notebook here. So untracked files means that it is not tracked by Git currently. So this notebook is saved. So it, it saves automatically in the Jupyter Hub, so it's saved here, but it has it is not part of Git yet. So if I want to add it to Git, I will type git space add, and then the name of the notebook. Um, Zoom in again. Um, you'll notice that if I type git space add and I start typing, I say gi and then tab, it auto completes for me. So I'm going to say git add. Now I'm going to git status again. And we can see uh, we have a few changes here. So now we have this changes to be committed. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from someone. If you could mute. That would be great, thank you. Um, so now we have these changes to be committed. So now it says there's a new file because I just added it as a git file and here it is. This is something you can ignore for now. Um, these are just, this is how a notebook works. Um, it has its own kind of checkpoints, but you don't, you don't wanna add those. So just keep them as untracked for now. And this actually tells me what to do. It says, this is um, to unstage. So basically if I want, if I accidentally added this file and say, oh, whoops, I actually don't want this to be added to Git. 
you can say git space rm, which remove, and then dash dash cached. It tells you what to write. But here I do want to add it. So now the next step is I want to create this checkpoint. So I'm going to say um, I want to commit the changes that I've made, which is creating this new notebook. Uh, and I want to commit it to my git folder or repository. So now I'm going to type git commit minus m. That means message. And then I have to put quotes and I have to put a little message in here. Um, so I might say um, created new notebook. And now I hit enter. So now if I do git status, now we don't have anything in green because that has already been added. Now it says it's been modified. This is kind of a feature because I have auto save on for my notebooks, it'll constantly say that it has been modified, but I haven't actually modified it right now. So now I have uh, I've added my, my new notebook to my Git repository. If I type Git log, it prints this out. It says there has been one commit. This is the commit kind of hash. This is a really long thing, but each commit has its own unique um, series of letters and numbers. Um, it says who the author is, which is me. And uh, it has the, the uh, message that I put, created new notebook and it has the time and date. Um, if I make a change to this notebook, then I can create another commit and we will see another line here. So if you're going through this for the first time on your hub or locally, um, here you can see that it knew who I was. It knew my name and it knew my email. So this, uh, this is because I had to fill this out earlier. Um, if your first time, you'll type git commit um, and it'll come up with a message that says, tell us who you are. Um, and you will need to do a git config dash dash user dot name, something like that, but it will tell you. So it will say, tell us who you are by evaluating the following lines of code. So it kind of, it help, Git tries to help you along when needed. And that's where you put in your name and email. Okay, let's see if I'm on track with what I was trying to say. Um, okay. So that was a little example. Um, a couple tips, um, do not include data in your Git repository. If your data is really small, then you can probably include it, but uh, it is better um, to not include your data. This is really for files, keeping track of files. Your data doesn't usually change either. Once you have your data set, it's not like you're constantly updating it. So it's not really a good candidate for Git. Um, you can use Git from anywhere. So I'm using it on the Jupyter Hub. You can use it locally. You can use it on another server. Um, you, you can use Git kind of anywhere. Um, I've mentioned this. So repo is short for repository, which is basically a folder. Um, and it's used, um, it's basically used to indicate a folder that has Git enabled, like I mentioned. Uh, I mentioned this before, so to install Git, you will need, uh, you'll need to install it if you're on Windows. It comes automatically on Linux or Mac. So I have a link here um, if you're on a Windows and you want to install it. So that was Git. Git is different from GitHub, but they are related. Uh, are there any questions about Git before I continue? I know I'm going very quickly, but hopefully this is at least helping a bit and we do have the recording going so you can come back as needed. Okay. I don't hear any questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hello Paige. Yes, hi. Yeah. Is it hi. <laughs> Is it possible to show an example of how you pull like an older version of a file? Um Yes, I actually don't know that offhand, so I would Google it. Um, <laughs> I haven't done that for a while. Um, so you mean like here, uh, here we have our current version of the notebook. If I make another change, say, add a new line. Now I have this new line to add. So if I do 
get status. I see that this has been modified. I can get add uh, this, get commit new line added. Um, and now if I do get log, I have these two checkpoints. So now let's say I, uh, I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't actually wanna create. So here we had this create new notebook and then added a new line. So oops, I didn't actually wanna add that new line. Um, do you remember offhand, Daniel, how to do that? I just haven't done it for a while and have to Google it. I also always have to copy. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. You can see the two of us instructors were like, I don't know, we just Google it. Um, so let's Google it. Um, point git. Let's see if that works. So I said, how to revert a file to a previous checkpoint using git. Get restore files to previous commit. That sounds good. Let's see. Um, okay. Oh, that's easy. So again, there's git log, so we can see. Then we're going to say git checkout commit hash. All right, let's give this a try. Good, good idea, Daniel. So I'm going to say um, git checkout commit hash. So git checkout, and then I mentioned the hash. So this is this really long. Uh, thing here of numbers and letters. So I'm going to say git check out that. Let's see if that works. Yep, switching to this. So now I'm in this, so it kind of tells me what has happened. Um, if you want to create a new branch, a branching is a thing. I'm not going to go into that right now, but that is very useful. Um, so now it says head is now at that. Let's see if that actually made a difference here. Nope. They get status. Head detached. So anyway, this gets a little complicated, I guess. I would have expected then if I reopened this, let's close that, stop it running and see if uh, see if it'll reopen. Um, okay, well, it reopened with a new notebook. Isn't quite what I expected to happen, but it doesn't have the lines that I added. So it did do something. So we know that this um, going going back really did did make a difference. Although I would have expected it to have that top header. Well, there is a semi-successful um, demonstration. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that was kind of helpful. It wasn't exactly what I expected to happen. Um, I have to Google a lot for Git because Git has all sorts of different commands and I always forget what they are. So mm -hmm. this is one where um, Google is absolutely your friend. There's a lot of information about Git out there. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna dive into GitHub. So GitHub is a website. Um, it allows developers, so it's really used for coding, to store and share code. Um, but there are also a ton of useful features um, for lots of things. So um, it's it can be used in all sorts of respects. Um, it's useful for collaborating with others because you can share your code very easily. Um, we're using it now, um, this coessing 2022 hub folder. This is actually on GitHub and we can sync it to our hub. So that's really easy to do. Um, I mentioned here, it's also useful to back up as a backup storage place for your code. So it's free to use. Um, there are a few features that are paid, but I've never paid to use it. Um, so at the moment it's, it's free. Uh, anyone can sign up and you can use it. Um, and you can use that. You can kind of all push or upload all of your code to GitHub and it serves as a, as a backup storage. That's really nice. Um, so um, a few notes before I take you to the website, just take a look at it. Um, GitHub repos or repositories or folders can be public or private. Um, you should never upload sensitive information, especially to public repos. Um, sometimes you might have a password saved or um, something that you don't want shared, you should not upload that to, to GitHub. So that's just a, a note. 
And Git and GitHub work together. So Git is this open source versioning tool. GitHub is a site where you can upload and share your code, but they work together very well. And I will show an example of that. First, let's go to GitHub. Um, oh, you know what? I have to go to copy that. I have to create a new private window because I'm already logged into GitHub. So this is what it'll look like if you haven't used GitHub before. Um, so it has, it, it's touting how many people use it, 83 plus million developers, blah, blah, blah. So lots of people use it. Um, it has some information here. Give your home, give your code a home in the cloud. And you can walk through and look, look through this. It has some examples. Um, here is some, uh, this is what a repository looks like. Uh, and it kind of walks you through a few things here. But if you're new to it, um, I suggest putting an email address in and signing up for GitHub. And it will walk you through the steps to do that. And once you sign up, you'll see something like this. So this is, I'm logged in as, as me. Here are some recent repositories I'm working on, my recent activity, all that stuff. Um, so uh, let's take a look at some that. Um, so here's an example. This is coessing. So I've created a coessing GitHub organization. Uh, this is the coessing 2022 hub. So this is on the internet right now. You can go to it. Um, this is where all of the code that you are running on your Jupyter hub is, is stored. And this is where it's coming from. So that's kind of nice to see. You can see who's contributed to this. So we have Daniel, myself, Oladipo, and Simone. These are contributors. Um, I have a little about this repo is for all of the Python and Julia content. GitHub can be used for any language. Um, so we also have some Julia stuff here. So this is what a repository looks like. You can see that I was the most recent contributor and it says two hours ago. Um, and remember we're using this terminology of commits. Sorry, maybe this is a little uh, small for you. This says there have been 71 commits to this repository. So if I click there and then scroll down, we can see all of the commits that have been made. So I made one by adding the files that we're looking at right now. Simone made one where he corrected something in his module. And these, these here where it says last correction on optional module or add files via upload, these are those messages when we're saying commit minus M and then in quotes, we write something. These are these messages that we're writing. So it is pretty nice to actually say what you have done to be pretty descriptive there just so that we know what's what's going on. Um, now it has commits from yesterday and you know you can see all of this stuff. So this is all public and you can see it right now. Um, there are issues on GitHub. So this one is one that I didn't see until I just pulled this up, but I didn't respond to it. Um, but you can start these issues. So this is saying, um, this is from Greg. He's saying, is this an appropriate place to add this lecture material? I should have responded, but I didn't. And this is what an issue looks like. So he has a comment. I could respond to this and say, you know, oops, didn't see this until now. Do you still want to upload your materials? And this is all live. So you, I'm actually writing this and um, I can then comment and it leaves this comment here. So we can have a whole discussion uh, about you know, whatever this issue is. Um, there are a few other things I was going to show. So here, this is a different, this is a, um, a repository that has a project. So this is called a project board. And I just wanted to show this briefly. This is a really nice way if you're working collaboratively with a group to know who is working on what. So here uh, we have we should be doing these things later, what we're doing right now, or what, what we're about to do, things that are in progress, and the things that are done. Um, and you can see these are all issues. So this is a way of having issues for each um, kind of problem you have. So for this one, it says data CESM, I was supposed to um, get that data uploaded, I actually already did, so I can end this. But you can see it's me here, 
um, I'm assigned to it. So I am working on this. This is really handy when you're working in a group because then we can make sure that others in the group are not working on it at the same time so you don't duplicate your efforts. So that's uh, that example. Um, this, is an, this is another example. This is of a Jupyter book. So this actually has the link here. And if I click on this, it will take us to a Jupyter book that I'm helping run. Got a message here. Um, yes, John says it's good for project management. It is so good. Um, let me go back. If I go here, there's actually a private repository called Python Planning. This is where Daniel and I and the other instructors, we actually, we didn't put any code here. We only used it to communicate and to plan all of the Python content. So you can look, there are all these issues open. We've discussed a few things. Um, we have like virtual Python sessions. This is where we were planning the sessions that we're talking about now. So uh, these are some suggested times, suggested topics. This is Daniel responding. And he's saying, yep, that looks great. We can thumbs up, you know, we can do all sorts of things. And we have this whole long discussion. And that's how we were able to plan these sessions for you today. So, um, so that's pretty cool. This is, uh, I have started using it to plan events and, and all sorts of things like that. So really, really useful. Uh, okay, let's see, what else did I wanna say? Um, so some common vocabulary. Uh, there, uh, I've been using the word repo a lot. Again, short for repository. It means a, on, on your local computer, it's kind of a folder that has Git enabled, um, but it also is kind of, it's the same thing on GitHub, but it's basically like this here is a repository, Python Planning 2022. Coessing is an organization, but this is one repository. Um, so it's basically, a diff it's a folder. And people shorten that to repo. So you'll see repo a lot. You'll often hear people referring to something local. When I say local, I mean on your own computer or on your own GitHub. So local is kind of in contrast to GitHub. So um, let's, let's use this one as an example, our hub. Uh, this is not a local version. So this, this is, you know, a bunch of files are here. Um, I can copy this um, and I can have it locally, but that is in contrast to having it up on GitHub where it's on the web, which is not local. So anyway, you'll hear local a lot. Um, a fork is how you can copy things. So if you go up here, you can see fork here, you can see that four people have already forked this. Forking means that I want to create a copy in my own GitHub name, basically. So this one is a, this organization is coessing slash coessing 2022 hub. If I fork it, um, I can fork it to my own. So I can say, I want it to be page M. That's my own um, GitHub username slash coessing 2022 hub. And I can create a fork. What that does is create a copy, you might as well do it. It creates a copy of all of those files, but now instead of coessing slash, it's page M slash. And this is forked, it says forked from, so we know where the ori origin is, the original one. So um, that's what that means. This is really useful if you're collaborating with people. Um, so in this case, like Daniel and I, you know, both may have forks of the same thing, then we can upload our files here and it, it helps kind of keep things separated. So there's a lot, there's a lot of detail here. So I won't go into all of it. You will hear words like origin and upstream. So these can mean different things, but usually um, I would call, since I just forked this to my own um, kind of username, I would call this my origin. So this is now on the cloud. It's on this website through GitHub. This is my origin. If I then bring this um, down to my local computer, uh, then this would be my local, that would be a local version. And I can show you that in a minute. Upstream is usually what I would call in this scenario, upstream would be the coessing version. 
So upstream is the one that is syncing to our hub right now. So that is one we don't want to mess up. I have my own fork, which is the origin. I can make changes and kind of test them out. And then I can try and push those and see if they will work. But this, this is kind of the upstream one. Okay, so I'm throwing a lot of new words and I really know that, but at least maybe you, you'll start to hear them and understand them. I already showed you what an issue was on GitHub. Um, pull request is another important one. So a pull request, um, let's see if we have an example here. We have two pull requests here. Someone saying add paragraph on analysis environments. So here someone is saying, I wrote some code and I'm requesting that the maintainers of this package or of this, in this case, it's a Jupyter book, look at this and see if it can be added to the code base. So this is basically, so this is this person, um, Doogie Squire. He added a, a paragraph. I can view it by clicking files changed. We can see, look, he added all of this information about analysis environments. Um, we can see all of the different commits that he has in this, in this pull request. Um, he has requested some reviews. I think I'm one of them, so I should probably do that. Nope, I'm not. Uh, um, but then uh, we can actually merge this pull request. So again, this is a lot of words, but a pull request is basically if you write some code that you want added, it's a way to, for everyone, especially the maintainers to look through it and make sure it won't break anything. So that's what a pull request is. Um, we're gonna look at a few common git commands. So you've seen git status. I've been doing that a lot. You saw git init, which initializes your repository. Uh, git clone, we haven't done that one yet. So let's do that. Um, so I now have this page M coesting 2022 hub. Um, I'm going to go back to my terminal here. I'm going to go back to the home folder. Uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to CD into that Git example. Now I'm here. No, I lied. I already created that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to make a new one and say make directory um, called uh, Git clone example. So now I'm going to go, go into this folder. I'm just creating a new folder for various reasons. Um, now, if I say git space clone, then I can go back here. Cause I, let's say I want to, I want to have all of these files in this folder. Uh, I can go to code. Um, I have this, it says git at GitHub. I'm going to copy that. Let's see if this works. I'm going to paste it here. Git clone. Okay, so this is saying, uh, could not read from the remote repository. Okay, that's interesting. So my permission was denied. So this is a thing you have to set up permissions. I'm not going to do that right now because it takes a little time. Um, but you would do this. You'd ha you have to set up your permissions. There's, um, I'm gonna have to. I'll have to link a few things because we're almost out of time or we're out of time. But that's what I would do. I would say git clone, and then it would basically add all of those files into this um, directory. That's too bad it didn't work. Um, OK, well, so here are a few other. We saw git add. We saw git commit. Uh, git pull is if you want to update your local repository from origin or upstream. So let's say I have this, I have my page M coessing one, um, but then Daniel adds something to the coessing organization one. So he adds something here. So something has changed. Then before I do any more work, I want to pull that data or pull that new file, whatever new changes there were um, into my own before I start working. So that's what git pull is and git push is the opposite. Now I've made some changes locally, but I want to push that to the remote repository. Um, and so I would use the git push command. 
So I'm pretty much out of time and I don't, I'm, I'm gonna have to run shortly. Um, I have a few other things here. Should I sign up for GitHub? Um, that's up to you. Um, there, uh, if you want to really be more involved with, um, especially writing software, but if you do a lot of coding, this will be a tool that will be very useful to you. And if you, if you, you know, looking for a job where you're doing programming, most places will, will look for this, uh, for GitHub knowledge. Um, it can be used as a uh, collaborative tool. I've kind of already showed that. And the last thing I'll mention is it can be used for a personal website. So um, my own website is on GitHub um, and it's free. Uh, you, these two links here can walk you through it, but you can have a nice website that, um, do I have my website here? Um, yeah, so this is my website and all runs on GitHub. Hooray. Okay, that was kind of a marathon of getting through all of that. So thank you for sticking with me. I know that's a lot and I, I understand you may not have understood exactly what was going on, but I hope that was at least a little introduction of what Git and GitHub are and if you might want to use them. So are there any questions at this point? No questions. I hope that doesn't mean that I just lost everyone. <laughs> I want to make a quick comment. I mean, if you don't. Please. Uh, I mean, yeah, probably you already mentioned it, but also from um, GitHub, you could have them. Um, you can have notebooks from there. So, I mean, you can download, for instance, if you want to work on SSD in say maybe the Gulf of Guinea, maybe someone has already worked on SSD in say maybe off the coast of California or something. So you have like code, you can easily just replace your data. Like you change your directory to place and you can use that code to analyze your you know, use the code in your analysis. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I guess I was breaking. No, I think we, we got what you were saying. No. Nope. That is a very good point. So a lot, uh, I mean, the point of all of this is sharing your code. So that also means that you can take other people's code. And that is really how, I think that's the best way to learn coding is to see how others do it and, you know, get, get, used to to how they write it so um yeah yeah so thank you for pointing that out very useful Bye. any other questions or comments i'll stop the recording